Hi guys, hey, welcome back. Uh, going to be going over this knife set that I have. I was wanting to do it this weekend on uh, while we while it was being used, but it was just way too much going on and uh, trying to get everything done. Uh, so I couldn't just simply throw the tripod up and start going. It was just way too much going on. But, what well, I was going to show you guys, anyhow, just talk over on how it performed and everything. This is a four-piece uh, Western Western Titanium Switch setup. It's a four-piece, well, five, including the handle. But, it comes in this little nylon uh, type case that I got, uh, it's actually gifted to me. Now, it looks like this inside. And let's get you down here. And I did get me a new uh, tripod, by the way. So that's a big plus. It's a nifty little one, too. So here, let me get to where I can see myself here. All right. Uh, but yes. Here's the handle. It's got this little button here on the side. And comes with a skinner. Uh, yeah, here we go. Comes with a little skinner with a gut hook and a little prong system on the bottom to go into the handle uh, through the top there. It can only go one way, I found out, the groove side. I was just toying around with it one day, but it comes with the skinner. Uh, this guy, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't really use this this weekend at all. Uh, this guy, this was, I used it quite a bit. It's just a little, uh, another, basically what, what I call a little pig sticker. There's, I know there's a name for it. But I can't I can't remember what it was right off what the name of it is. And then it's got the saw back a uh, saw on it. This is a butcher set, but it's a very very cheap butcher set. Uh, here we can angle it up here a little bit more. Uh, but this if you've seen seen my other video about the saws. It uh, it, had, uh, it was on that three oaks, yeah, the three oaks uh, folding saw. Uh, about how the teeth were formed up, and uh, how there was two sides, how they were formed like this, and they were offset from each other, and how there were two different uh, two different grinds on them. Uh, well, that's the way this one's set up. I know. I don't know if it can, if you can see down that or not, but you might be able to tell there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that's the way that's set up. And as you saw, those things were very good. I actually wound up using that three oaks, uh, a three oaks folding saw, uh, Friday. Uh, for this butchering that we did. We did, well, we did about 1,500 pounds worth of freaking pigs this weekend. And, uh, of course, I had to take this set out and try because I had this thing for about a year and never had a chance to use it. And, but I didn't use this saw for it. I was just too, it was too short for what, was do, what, for what we were doing. I mean, you got to think, the necks on the pigs were this big around and well if you combine these oh uh, well, I wasn't going to get up far, very far up in there even with the flesh being cut back and everything on the pig oh yeah and that's another thing another reason why I didn't do it because I didn't know how YouTube was going to do and Facebook if you guys have me on Facebook how they would be uh, Watching all that, and how they, how they would classify it. So that was no, another reason why I didn't go ahead and do the video. 
But yes, this this setup would not have been big enough. It would uh, to do that part. It would have been big enough for the uh, feet, but not big enough for the doing that portion of it. But uh, as you saw, these this little pro these this little prong end here, uh, and it just goes right in. I don't know. If, it's got is that some kind of a pressure? A spring spring loaded uh, cog of some sort that goes in there, a smooth board cog that uh, goes right inside there. And whenever you push that button, I don't know I don't know if I got the right lighting for this. Nope, I don't. Alright, well you can see it from here, but uh whenever you go stick it in, you gotta push this button on the side and just slides right in and it's locked. You have to wait for it to click. You hear the little click on it. That way you know it's in there. Now, uh, I know that this all would work great. I'm certain of it. Um, like I said, this, this I didn't use. Uh, just out of, just out of, uh, convenience I just didn't use it it wasn't wasn't really necessary for me to use it but uh, I still could have if I wanted to but these these are the ones I used quite a bit uh, this one was for the primary processing of it uh, and it had done very well it it would last probably uh, 10-15 minutes or so of meat processing before I had to run it on the steel sharpener to uh, correct the edge on it and this guy it uh I still didn't. I still didn't use this gut hook. On it, I used it on. I used my uh, Cabela's gut hook. Uh, but I use this one for the skinning, and I might not have been using it right. But whenever we had it laying down, had the hog laying down on, on the ground, this just didn't seem to perform well at all for for the hog laying down. Uh, it just didn't seem like it was performing well. Maybe I just wasn't doing it quite right then. But I'm also used to having having these guys hanging, uh, having all deer and whatnot hanging and processing it that way. Uh, but we were we were actually doing it on the advice of a uh, professional butcher that had been doing it for years, and of course trying trying new stuff. It didn't really work in. We were trying to, uh, we were trying new stuff, but I said this for that part it didn't perform real well. But once we started, once we went back to hanging them, once we weren't quite uh, getting used to it, I realized how we weren't getting used to it. We started hanging them back up, and uh, this thing I was going to town on on it. I mean it. I, I was, it would take me probably 20 or 30 minutes to completely skin a hog. Well, maybe not that long. It's probably more like 10 or 15 uh, minutes to completely skin a hog with this. And uh, it had, I, I liked it, I liked it a lot. And I was really surprised on it. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't hardly even, uh, uh, having to put any kind of effort into the into doing it all, but this is one thing I really liked about it. How oh, this is set up. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little sore today, so if I'm, it seems like I'm moving around slow, that's why. Uh, but this is what I liked about this setup, though, was this this uh, finger hook, uh, this finger notch here, and uh, and the groove, the thumb groove up top here. I, this thing, whenever I was pulling the skin back and going at it, I, it allowed me to go up, uh, get closer to the cut, and have more control of, over it. And uh, it just good, easy, like good, easy, smooth cuts. Once I started going, because I could lead, I was able to lead with this uh, front and just go at it. Once I got around the legs and everything. Uh, but it, 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 it is I was really impressed with. 
And this guy, I said, oh, I guess I already went over it. But uh, I said, I, 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 I use this one for processing uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so it, uh, I was impressed with it for the most part. I was going back, back and forth between this and the fillet knife I was using. Only because it was a, the fillet knife I was using was a little bit thinner up top, and uh, well, it was longer. The cur the belly wasn't as as deep on the fillet knife as most people know. Uh, a deal with them. The belly on a fillet knife isn't as deep as this, so it actually and it stretches up farther. Oh no. Yeah, you see the be this is a deep belly for this. Uh, and comparing it to a fillet knife, it actually be stretched up. Oh, come on, focus for me. Uh, it'd be stretched up farther, and this part would be more straight coming out. But that, that only allowed me to get down inside, get closer to the bone and everything. And uh, uh, yeah. I, I, overall, I, I I am definitely going to be using this setup a lot more for it. Uh, it's a little bit more cumbersome, a little bit more not cumbersome, a little bit more uh, a little annoying changing out blades on this when you're trying to do it in a hurry, but. That way, maybe it was just. What uh, one thing I noticed, because you know, I was doing both, I was using this system and I was using uh, what I had normally used, which is just simply a uh, uh, gut hooked uh, Skinner knife, uh, uh, similar to I think similar to similar to this one. Very similar to this, except it didn't have a little bottle opener. That's another little feature. It has a little bottle opener at the bottom. Oh no, yeah, there. Right next to my finger. It has a, that little bottle opener. But, uh, yeah, but yes, yeah, so what I usually use is that Cabela's with a fillet knife. That's usually all I ever use. And, uh, I had used both, both of them, use that and this. And, the convenience, yes, it, uh, well, yes, on both, really. But, for convenience purposes, you don't really have to worry about uh, misplacing the knife on this system. You don't really have to worry about uh, misplacing the knife. You can just simply pull it out, set it next set it down next to you and put the other one back in and uh, but no, no matter what it's still two knives uh, but it's got ups and it just simply has its ups and downs but oh by the way I'm not getting paid for this <laughs> I'm not getting paid for this review at all but overall uh, it, it's a very good system and uh, there's kind of a way to put these uh, that I put these in uh, it does have a three pocket system well four pocket one for the handle here and one uh, and three yeah three more here uh, here and here at the top I usually just drop the skinner in first Drop this one in to the next one up, along with uh, the pig sticker, and then the saw back at the top. That's why that's the way I usually set them up, but it doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be different on it. So overall, this is a, a rather good system, but everybody's everybody's going to be different. Uh, there's one one major issue I noticed though on cleaning. Um, of course, the clean, clean, cleaning the blades isn't going to be an issue. What my uh, problem would be is uh, taking this apart and cleaning that inside out. That I it's got screws on the sides on both sides. I don't know if you can see. There's one here here and I think uh, and then two down the center on both sides 
And I'm sure you can probably take it apart and clean it out. But I'd be worried about that spring and the pin and everything for this button. That it, it would go all over the place. But I'm sure there's, I'm sure you can probably do that. I haven't yet. So I'm, I'm kind of scared to do it. Because uh, I have a bad tendency of taking something apart and uh, misplacing a part that's inside a component. But, uh, which I'll probably end up having to do anyhow, just be on the safe side, or at least drop it in something and let it soak, like Clorox or alcohol or something on that lines. Go ahead and clean it out and get all the bacteria out of this inside. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but uh, overall, it's not that bad. I mean, comparing in being a cheaper end, a cheaper uh, processing kit uh, it isn't that bad for the average Joe. If you're doing this professionally, don't get this. I mean, it's it may be convenient and everything, less less room for knives and everything, but you can't hardly be a regular fixed blade knife uh, for butchering. Just for overall uh, purposes uh, and performance, I would think would uh, the fixed blades would be a lot better. But if you're doing it just here and there like I do. Um, this system would be very well, I would think. And I said, I we we process about 1,500 pounds worth of pigs, or well, over over five pigs this weekend, over three days. And uh, that took. We we got them Friday. We started the processing Friday night and uh, field dressing them and everything and then started the skinning and everything else uh, Saturday, starting Saturday, just simply Saturday. Uh, finally wrapped it up at about 5 o'clock Sunday night. So that was a lot of packaging, a lot of cutting. It was just a big process, but it was fun. It was interesting. Uh, got to meet, got to meet a few extra people because of all this COVID nineteen stuff going on. A lot of other people are going straight to, uh, uh, well, cattle, cattlemen. Uh, pig, I don't even know what you call the people that uh, raise feeder pigs, but a lot of people are going to those and every going to those people straight and buying their uh, food, and then most of the time uh, in areas like our uh, like around here, we process our own meats, and especially if there's a big old group of a uh, uh, group of people doing it coming to get, coming together for it. It is awesome just see just seeing it happen, and just seeing it happen, not even being a part of it, knowing that people are doing this. It is awesome to see, and being a, actually being a part of it is awesome. And granted, I've, I've done processing in the past, but having actual professional showing showing me some stuff, uh, like like just uh, like Saturday, he was showing uh, telling us that on pigs. Mind you, I, I processed a few pigs in the past, but he was telling us, uh, of course I'm not a professional at it either, I'm, I'm not claiming that title by any manner, uh, but he was, he was telling us that on the pig processing, you start on skinning, you, you start at the, uh, let me think here, uh, on the right side, you start at the rear leg and go forward, go to the front shoulder. And then on the left side, you start at the front shoulder and work back to the rear quarter. quarter. And because that's the way that everything has, comes together on, on that. That's what he was telling me anyways, but... Uh, Watching him do it just put me to shame, really, to be honest with you. And it was just awesome watching it because he would, he would have it done up in a matter of ten minutes, oh, well, uh, probably less than ten minutes. And this guy's seventy plus years old, and it was just awesome watching him. 
uh, do that up and also going ahead and processing the meat as well. He went and walked us through some of the stuff, showing us extra stuff of what a few of us already knew, but showing the other people who have never done it before, showing them how to do it. And it was just, it was an awesome ordeal, awesome experience. Uh, I had my son out there for a couple of days and just for him to be a part of it on top of playing with a cousin of his and uh, my sister's son. And uh, we had, yeah, we had my, oh, basically my, a big portion of my group, my dad, uh, his wife, uh, she was out there for a little bit Saturday and Sunday had my wife. Oh, I had my whole group out there yesterday and had uh, my sister and uh, Brother-in-law which I'll be making a video with him here in the near future and I don't know when exactly yet, but uh, He's starting up on a deal on Facebook, so uh, Brandon Foe, he's going on the title of uh, Chef B so he does a lot of cooking and whatnot. And he might end up following him of uh, seeing of some of the, the pork that we processed on on his deal. Uh, but we had a, we had a bunch of people out there, probably twenty people or so, uh, on uh, in almost any given point in time. People who were actually buying the meat, who had actually bought the meat and was processing it, and people other people who were just simply pitching in. Uh, but okay, I completely jumped off track here. Um, man alive, we're sitting at 21 minutes, 22 minutes. Alright, um, let's go with, uh, this video verse is going to be, uh, Proverbs 29, uh, no, wait, wait, sorry, 30, Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. And it says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Don't add to his words or he will rebuke you. And you will be proved a liar. And that is Proverbs 30, 5 and 6. And I'll see you guys in the next one.